So as I was saying, I would become very reactive to some of the things he would say. And he called me on it and told me that he, I was wonderful and perfect for him, but he didn't like my uh, temperament. <laughs> and of course I was, and of course I was like, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. Yeah. Um, but, but I also had enough knowledge about spiritual growth that I knew that I knew he was probably right. Yeah. But, uh, and I also, I've, I, emotions has been something, Agnes, that I've struggled with, struggled with my whole life. I don't know if other people can relate to that, but uh, just struggled with feeling like my emotions were in control of me. Yeah. And feeling an intensity uh, about my emotions, especially around men. Okay. Yes. My, my, my around men. And so I understood that going into it, that I had abandonment issues because my parents divorced when I was a kid and I didn't see my father from the time I was six years old until the time I was 18. Yeah. So uh, that really had a, a <laughs> tremendous effect on me. And also, I think uh, what so many of us deal with in terms of not feeling good enough, not feeling pretty enough, really unsure about where I fit, where I was fitting in the world. Just, just this. We, what is this world that I was in? You know, it was really. I remember. You no, know, I think back on it now, feeling that way. But it's particularly around my relationships with with men, and not knowing how to feel a sense of respect around them, uh, not knowing how to feel grounded around them. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> but by by setting by. The, one of the first things, you know, with him in terms of uh, s establishing self-respect was to say, look, we, we need to wait until there's intimacy, which was good, but that was only the beginning <laughs> of so much more that I was going to be learning in this situation. So the emotional, in, the emotional reactions to him was he didn't like that. And so, and, uh, and I thought it was him triggering me. That's what I wanted to believe. Now I know different. So we had this kind of back and forth thing. Uh, uh, and then the first breakup was probably maybe nine months into our relationship. And because because Michael, can, like I said, he's, he's kind of a, a goofball in a lot of ways. And he, he is a, like an alpha male, like full on alpha male. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, um, he would, I would, he calls it butt hurt. <laughs> it's a turn. It's a, <laughs> I, he, would, he would say that I would get butt hurt by some of the things he would, he would say. And, and it seemed like when I look back on those times where I would get upset with him, it would felt like a runaway train Yeah. Or before I knew it, I was just scream at him and yell at him. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's what he didn't, didn't like. Yeah. And, uh, so that's what led to the first breakup. <laughs> and that was exactly the time I found Abraham Hicks on YouTube. Because back in the secret days, when the secret came out, there was no YouTube. No. Even then. That's right. And I, re there was no YouTube. And I remember being so excited when I saw the secret for the first time, because if you've done any kind of intense spiritual study, lo most of the spiritual source material, either from hundreds of years ago or from today, they all say a lot of the similar types of things. They're all just in different ways. Yeah. And I realized that the secret was talking about universal principle, but it was a specific, I didn't, I didn't, know in that context that because that was the first time I was I was exposed to it in that way yeah I also didn't know that there's been all there were all these amazing teachers and ancient knowledge about it I didn't know it at that time but the secret blew my mind and I started I started working on on it but uh, when I realize now you know uh in terms of uh it, it was really it, it I was excited about it, but I didn't understand the mechanics, mm. okay, because 
the secret itself, the movie doesn't go into the d detailed mechanics. Yeah. Because it can't. And even Rhonda Byrne's books, she does to some extent, but it, I, I guess you also come and you have layers of understanding of awakening, I think, too. Yeah. So, but by the time that first breakup happened with Michael, I had started, I found Abraham Hicks and I, I'd heard of the book, Ask and It Is Given, and I didn't know what it was prior to then. I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. But when I started hearing her, I started hearing her lectures and I realized what was she was talking about. I realized that she had originally been in The Secret. Did you know that? Yeah. And she, Rhonda, decided to cut out her part. I know. And yeah, yeah. What a um, but I know, I know, I know. Um, but then I started to have a, I started to have a much stronger, a much better understanding of what was really going on with me. And I start, I just threw myself into the study. <clears throat> so, so I started to to use my little like a colt you know baby a baby horse i started to try to apply some of the principles during that breakup with michael and it was really scary it was really scary i was really scared um also i realized that i needed to work on the money issue as well so Michael and I came back together about a month later, but then about three months later, we had another breakup. And so that was about spring of 2014, that would be spring of 2015. And I also went through a major like financial collapse at that time. Because a few, a few years early, earlier, I had left a long time corporate job in the IT field because it wasn't me and I, I, I had the right idea about following my passion, my calling of music, but again, I didn't understand the mechanics yet, especially about core beliefs. That's the big humdinger right there, core beliefs. I didn't know about how, enough about that at the time. So all my fears about lack and money and not enough money just came roaring down on me uh, within about three years after leaving that corporate job, mm. because, you know, I had, I'd had savings and things that, you know, and unemployment after I left that job and I was okay for a couple of years, but then the, you know, what hit the fan yeah. and I was, for, I was forced to change my lifestyle. And so by the, t by 2015, things were really, my old thoughts were really catching up to me and it all collided. And so, um, and then Michael broke up with me again in 2015, uh, like April of 2015. Mm. But by that time, I had about three months of studying Abraham Hicks. So I started applying some of her ideas. And uh, uh, one of her, one of the, the most incredible tools I think from Hicks in, especially in asking it is given, is the emotional scale. Yeah. That, that is one of the best tools I've ever found in anything it, to help me understand and be able to tune in to where I'm at on any given moment, that emotional scale, and how, how she discusses how you can talk yourself, literally talk yourself up from the very bottom, and if you get to the door of hope, then yeah. you're on your way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was doing, and, and at that time, I... I I had to move and I lost my car and I no work was coming in. Oh, it was just really, and then Michael and I split up, but listening to Hicks helped me to understand more of what was going on. And then the book, the book before Ask It, it Is Given, I think it's just Law of Attraction. It was a book they, they did before Ask It, it Is Given. I, I, one of my girlfriend's, Borrow, let me borrow that book. So I read that, and then I read Ask, I read Ask and It Is Given. So I knew that there was some breakthrough there. At least I knew what was going, exactly what was going on. Yeah. And I was thinking, how come the whole world doesn't know this? This is like, this is it right here. This is why the world is the way it is. Oh, my God. Yeah. But um, so I started applying the principles, and I was able to attract Michael back into my life, 
by July of 2015. Yeah. But I hadn't done enough work yet. I hadn't done enough work yet. I didn't understand totally about, I knew about art of allowing and, <laughs> but I, I wanted him back so badly that I kind of rushed it along. Yeah. Now I, I don't, I do think it's okay to contact, but I, you really have to be in a very centered place when you do. And yeah. I admittedly, even though I'd done some work, I, I, I wasn't still there yet in July of 2015. So when we got back together, he was happy, but he was like, you, 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 you. And I'm like, oh man. And the things that, um, his personality traits that used to drive me crazy were just amplified. Like, but it was like, I love you coming from him. I love you, but you, you, you type of stuff. <laughs> so, so after that, after that, Agnes, that's when, once I got him back, I completely went lazy. Yeah. I went lazy with, I went lazy on a number of levels. I went lazy with self care, not totally, but, I wasn't, my world became about Michael. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the good parts about that is that we were working on the music a lot and we started performing together. So that part was amazing. And also the love we, I mean, we have an amazing connection, amazing chemistry. We're both goofballs. We're both fun and funny and like to laugh. I mean, there's, yeah. I could go on and on about, how great he is. And I think I have a lot of the same qualities as well. But the negative stuff was just, oh my God, seemed like out of control. And I was still having those intense emotional reactions to him. Yeah. And started feeling the times of neediness and uh, fear. Um, and all my world was about him, you know. And prior to that, I, I hadn't been like that, especially after my divorce. I I was divorced in 2005, and right after that, I became involved in the music scene with, uh, as a singer with bands, and then I had my own band. I also play guitar, and I write, write as well, and I had, a lot of, I had a lot of musician friends and a lot of yoga, friend, yoga teacher friends, and I had a really active social life. But when my, I turned into that girl, that woman, that, mm. and not intentionally, I wasn't like, I knew better, but he became, he just eclipsed my whole vision. Yeah. And so I, I wasn't doing, <clears throat> I got lazy in my vibrational work. I got lazy in my study of, of the principles of law, of the, of the law. Very lazy. Cause I'm like, Oh, I got him back. So everything's okay. You know, I thought, <clears throat> and then, um, that manifested into, other problems continuing as you know when you don't fully address it the stuff you don't want just continues mm -hmm. but i and i knew at the back of my mind i should be doing this work because if you don't what ends up happening is you get stuff you don't like and a lot a lot of stuff you don't like and some stuff that you do like yeah. but a lot of stuff that you don't like and you don't want so i already knew that was the case and so there was more of that going on, the, the push and pull stuff between us, uh, more of me is issues with, with, with money and finding work and that kind of a thing. And just a uh, lot of frustration at times because, you know, I was doing the bare minimum of my spiritual work. I was doing like maybe some meditation every morning, but that was it. And then it was Michael and what I was doing with Michael and trying to survive a lot of survival stuff going on. Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, there was also a third party in that there was a, uh, he had a child with another woman. He'd had a child. And so that became, a, I felt threatened by that because the reason that came up was because my ex-husband had had a child with another woman and that played a huge role in our relationship. In fact, that child that I ended up being stepmother to, that whole dynamic ended up, ended up destroying our, our marriage. Yeah. But, but when I, the whole you pushed out issue for me was not feeling, feeling second best even prior to meeting my ex-husband, going back to my father and even before that, blah, blah, blah. 
Yeah. So <clears throat> I knew when that issue was coming up with Michael, I'm like, oh man, this is this is happening again. Why? Yeah. And I, I remember I was meditating once and I asked, so this, now we're chronologically, we're getting to the summer of 2016, okay? Yeah. And that issue of this baby mama, that's, have you heard of that term, baby mama? Yeah. That term, baby mama, I don't know if they say that in Australia, but no. baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> baby mama. Um, I realized, I, 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 I asked intuitively why this issue was coming up again. The answer I got back was, so you can learn to stand in your power. Wow. Now, what I, what I thought that meant was, was to set boundaries with Michael and yell at him and tell him this, what, this and this and that and this and that. I realized now that's not what that meant at all. I realized that the work I'm doing now is actually the power that I was, I was supposed to stand in because it was a, another repeated situation. Yeah. But at least I had the first inclination. And so there were, during the course of 2016, late 2016 to 2017, the, I realized that <laughs> the, his child's mother, I won't say baby mama, she, uh, <laughs> she uh, got in my face by oh. phone one time out of the blue. Yeah. So it kind of turned into that kind of a thing for a minute. Yeah. And again, once again, I was all fired up and you, you know, angry at Michael and, and just, I felt like it was starting to become a runaway train again for yeah. me. And my emotions were just so how to whack regards to him. And then I was starting to get angry about the situation. I did want him to be with his child, but I didn't like, I had a lot of fear about what was going on. A lot of fear. So that just created the inevitable. And so, <clears throat> which brings us to um, fall of 2017. <laughs> and it really, things can come to a head with that for me. Because once again, I thought standing in my power with him was, I want you to call me when you're having parenting time. And why is she, that kind of thing. Well, I was doing that. Yeah. And also asking, well, who do you want to be with? And he told me repeatedly, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. I love you. I don't want to, you know, I just want to have time with my, my kid. Yeah. But I didn't believe him. No, it's never was, enough. When you feel that stuff, it's never enough. Yeah. No. So um, the whole breakup had happened one evening in November, and he was just he was just kind of being a grumpy grumpy bat, brat. He was at my place, and we were doing our thing, trying to watching a movie, making dinner, and he was just being kind of a brat. And anyway, the next morning, I was so angry at I got angry at him, and it all this stuff came spewing out about that situation. I won't say what I said, <laughs> but. What I said was very unkind, and I remember the look on his face when he said it, and I knew immediately after the words fell out of my mouth that yeah, I felt immediately horrible, and of course, he stormed off. Yeah. And then after that point, so we're at, right now we're at November of 2017. After that point, I mean, I... I did the crazy thing in a way. I tried to get him to talk. I showed up at his work. Yeah. I didn't give him his space. I went into incredible um, separation anxiety mode, which is a huge, another issue that a lot of people are going through. They need to yeah. realize they're going through separation anxiety, Yeah. which is a, more of a psychological level. But, and so I went through all of that. He kept in, we, he was still keeping in touch with me. And I, I knew Agnes that it was coming. The breakup was coming. I knew, and I wanted to use everything I could to stop it. My feminine wiles. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to just pretend like we weren't going to break up yeah. because I didn't want to go through the pain that I knew I was going to go through. I yeah. knew that the pain of losing him just might be it for me. I just knew that it was, I just did not want to go through it. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I wanted to just skip over it and like, can we just go back to normal and I'll do better type of thing. Yes. But that's not what happened. Um, he, he did a whole breakup thing with me and I was of course devastated. But after that, we did the back and forth for probably six weeks because he didn't really want to break up with me. He didn't want to do that. It was hurting him too. Now that I, I found out now, yeah. but he was in a lot of pain too. Um, so that's why there was that back and forth. So by the time the beginning of the year came, like I told you in my email, I, I realized cause I came, I came into his work one night and he was not nice to me. And, uh, I was devastated, but I knew that I had to stop. Yeah. And I started, oh, it was so hard. And then I started going online, like I told you in the email, that uh, just regular old uh, dating, getting back your ex dating coaches. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And so they helped me get to a certain point. They yeah. helped, they, they're, all of them are good, you know, they, some of them not so much, but they all mean well. And I think a lot of them have some wonderful advice. And what they helped me was, was to go no contact, uh, which I did <sighs> so hard. And he actually called me twice over the first couple weeks. I went no contact and left messages saying, I miss you and so on. Then he lost his phone. So I didn't have his number. <laughs> uh, so then, like I told you also in the email that uh, February of 2018, I, I hadn't heard from him in like three weeks. And I was starting to realize that it might be a while before I hear from him again. Mm. And I was devastated. Yeah. I was crying. I was... I felt like this massive hole in my heart. I felt terrible because I knew I'd caused it. Mm. And um, so those, but those dating coaches, again, they were helpful to a point, but there was a lot of conflicting information going on too. Yeah. So one thing that, uh, a that Hicks talks about, and also I don't know if you've heard of a lady called Anita Morjani. No. But she, um, she was a Wayne Dyer kind of, discovery where she had died she had had a horrible uh, end state cancer went to the other side and was told of her real self was came back and was completely healed of her she's a hay house author okay. so you can find her i can send you her 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 name and her information but she's amazing and she also talks about which is another issue of talking to too many people or going to too many resources on the internet. And then you just get confused. Yeah. So that's what's starting to happen to regular dating coaches. Some were saying, wait 30 days, then make contact. Some were saying, don't make contact until they do. Yeah. So that's when, when you're getting a sign from the outside, which is getting back to the reassurance thing. Yeah. Too many different messages. That's when you have to stop. Yeah. So, that's, so by the end of, February of 2018, I stopped uh, list. I just, I, I started to remember Abraham uh, Hicks, Abraham Hicks stuff. Yeah. And I started to, okay. I, I knew that that was the problem and I knew I, I needed to go back to those teachings immediately. So I got all those people off my newsfeed <laughs> yeah. and, um, and interest, interestingly enough, Agnes, one of your videos popped up on my stream probably mid-February. Okay. And it just was like self-love meditation to get your, med your ex back. And I thought, how am I going to – I wasn't ready. But I made a mental note. Hmm. Okay. So then I started listening to Abraham Hicks again, and I started to work on, work on those things again. And that's when, like I told you, I found Veronica – her uh, came up on my feed and she, she had this big smile and it said, get your ex back in 25 days using the law of tr attraction. So I was like, what the hell, what do I got to lose? So I yeah. clicked on it. And that's when I started her, her, um, 25 day program. Yeah. Cause like I said, I tell you at that time I would, cause what I noticed about those other coaches 
I just wasn't feeling better, Agnes. I, I was function. I was going through the motions. I was, you know, exercising and I was, and I was, had been started working on my book. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was so sad on the inside. I was so sad and I was just missing. Him. And I remember, uh, one of the first videos uh, he, uh, uh, that I listened to again was where uh, Esther says, missing him, if you're missing someone, you're out of alignment. Yeah. And at first I thought, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what am I not supposed to miss him? Yeah. But now I totally understand what she means. Yeah. She's very correct. If you're missing someone, you are out of alignment. So once I started doing Veronica's work, I started the visualizing was so key. I can't say enough about visualizing. Now I hadn't, I hadn't touched into Neville Goddard yet. You guys got me into Neville Goddard. Okay. Uh, yeah. You, you and Veronica, because she started talking about, she was talking about him. I hadn't seen the video with you two yet. But uh, the visualizing, Veronica has you visualizing twice a day. And the reason that brought my anxiety down was because in visualizing, especially with a, a specific person, when you're doing it correctly from your eyes out, right? Yeah, you, yeah. Visu you visualize from your, your, your perspective out. I immediately felt a connection with him. Yep. I felt a connection in with him and, and it feels good to visualize. Yeah. It raises your vibration. And I was like, oh my God, it was like the antidote for my anxiety. So whoever's wa gonna watch this and listen to this, realize yeah. how important visualizing or imaging, imaginary, yeah. uh, when you're doing your imaginary work, yeah. is so important in getting you guys out of this addiction feeling in helping to alleviate your anxiety because you're you're going to feel connected to your person. Yeah. So not only are you not only is are you focused and the energy you're sending out is amazing and powerful, your anxiety level is going to drop. So do your visualizing work because you do it for yourself because you're yeah. going to feel better immediately. So that's what happened. So within 2 weeks of doing that work I started to feel better. I started to feel kind of like a normal person again a little bit. I was still struggling with sadness, but every time I would just keep I would try to talk to myself. I hadn't started your work that yo that yet though. And but I started seeing your your stuff on my feed. And um then I saw your interview with Veronica. Ah uh, yes, yes. And I loved it. Yeah. And um, that's when I started uh, your meditations. And so within two weeks of starting that work, I, I'm aware, I'm, a, I'm aware of signs, but they come to me. I don't go looking for them. Like you know how you've said that numbers really isn't your thing. Yeah. The numbers like the eleven, eleven, all that numbers have been coming after me since probably about 2009 10 yeah where they, I'm not looking for them to just start happening yeah and so I think for me they're a significant thing but I don't go looking for it it, it comes it's whatever way that is communic a good communication for me yeah okay yeah <clears throat> so um, but the first sign I got was I ran smack into one of his best friends one of his best friends, he's actually one of his training clients, he's this wonderful sweet man from India, and I ran into him at this grocery store that I never go to. It was a Saturday night, and I was doing my, some of my work, and I stopped into this grocery store, and I ran smack into him, no, well, I ran into him, and he's a small man, so if I, had, if I had just for one second looked another way, I would have not seen him. And so we said hello, and we hugged, and it was just a brief conversation, and I knew then that if I just smiled and he asked me how I was doing, and I said, I'm doing great, and I smiled. And then when I got in my car, I was like, oh, my God, that was the universe moving. I knew it. I could feel it. And yeah. the reason I could feel it was because in the moment when I ran into him, I wasn't thinking about Michael. I was just doing my own thing. I was actually feeling good. 
I was just, you know, doing my thing. And I was totally relaxed. And I ran into his friend. And I knew that Rogoff is his name. He was going to tell Michael. I yep. said, Juana, I knew he was going to do that. Yeah. And, and, but there was a feeling. There's a feeling to when it's the most beautiful, exquisite thing. When you can tune into that feeling of the universe doing, it's incredible. It's like, I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. It, how the universe orchestrates things is yeah. when you are having awareness of it, it's, it, you know what I mean? It's so amazing. Like, oh, just the beauty of it. It's just like yeah. watching nature. Yeah. You know? And I was like, oh my God. So I was so excited because I knew that that was my first sign. It was just, just two weeks after I had done some focused discipline practice. So it's not very long when the nope. universe goes to work right away. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so that's when I got really excited. And then I, I started doing your work. I started listening to your videos. I loved how, <laughs> so excited. I feel like I'm going to cry. <laughs> I love your just natural, you, first of all, I could relate to you because we're both the same age and a lot of your story I could relate to. Yeah. I love how you share about your journey and what you went through with trying to change your life and live a different life, create a different life. Yeah. And, and then your meditation videos were just, I realized that the self love, well, the first time I did a self love, I was just like, Oh, it felt so good to say people. I can't tell you enough how important the self love is. I know you want to skip over it. Uh, yeah. But I Everybody cannot knows. tell you enough. The self-love and Agnes it beats it in our heads all the time. But yep. some of you aren't getting it. You've got to do the <laughs> self-love. Okay? And even if, you know, I know you, know, you want to put up a lot of resistance to that. And yeah. that's, you know, we're trained to not love ourselves in this world, yeah. in the yeah. Western culture. Yeah. It's really an epidemic. It's really yeah. an epidemic really and, is it's, and it's, it's an epidemic of i need you to love me so i can feel better we're trained very highly in that oh. yeah. well it, and it's so true and i already had been introduced to that understanding through my study of a course in miracles have you heard of a course in miracles yeah my mom did it years and, ago i remember when i was growing up <laughs> doing it yeah you were probably like oh <laughs> I, I discovered A Course in Miracles um, in early 2000, and I knew nothing about it, but um, it, it's a difficult to, book to read, but I, I started studying it, and it helped me. I thought it was profound, but there's a section in there that talks about special relationships, and what the idea is that exactly what we've been talking about here at this work was that you're making one person your everything yeah. especially in the romantic this romantic notion of that this person is supposed to fulfill you that's why it doesn't work and that's why you're always kind of in a low level of pain in it because it's not who you really are you're yeah. not supposed to try to get love from something or somebody else you have it all within you yeah. so when i started doing your self-love med meditations i just i just went to town i mean there's so many to choose from i started experimenting yeah. with not experimenting with doing different ones and it felt so good and then i started doing your combos i love your the combo ones you oh, have them um, yep yeah. you have the and then I started, you were talking about Neville Goddard a lot. Mm. And I listened at first, at first when I started, when I listened to some of his lectures mm. in those weeks, I was like, now I love accents. I love people from other cultures. And, you know, he talks like this. Yeah. And it was very much like this, the way he talks. Yeah. And I, so I was like, Oh my God, I, I wasn't, I couldn't hear him at first. Yes. So I listened to you guys. It's, I listened to you explain it and I thought, okay, but I definitely was intrigued by him and um, I'm still, I'm, I'm really now just beginning to realize how amazing he is. Like, yeah. holy crap. Un wow. I know. So, and Wayne Dyer, actually, he was one of Wayne Dyer's teachers. Yep. Did you know that? Yep. So. So I started it. So the, and then the techniques. I wasn't sure. Well, techniques. Should I be doing techniques? But I thought, well, yeah. What the hell else do I have to lose? Yeah, I'm going to do them. Yeah. And so I started doing uh, 
couple of my first favorite ones because I was listening to what you were saying about do yourself love, then project. Yeah. I remember one of your explanation videos, I listened to it over and over and over again. Do yourself love, then project your love out. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I started doing. And um, <clears throat> my, uh, my favorite was the self-love first best whispering technique combination where you're wearing the, you're wearing the same sweater you wore in your video with veronica the blue and white sweater ah the, the, okay the meditation <laughs> that meditation of the, the the first the self-love yeah. combo first best combo whispering technique okay that one and then the other the self-love first best sending love yeah you have two videos that have the combination and so I did those yeah a lot and I kept up with everything else I watch your videos watch Veronica I was starting to get into more into your videos the one you did with John Carande oh my god he is amazing he yeah. is so advanced John Carande yeah. so I started listening to so the five weeks from hit from running into Rogoff well now five weeks from the start of March yeah Running into Rogoff two weeks later, and then about four weeks after that, that's when I got the phone call. Now, mind you, <laughs> right before he called, I actually had gone down in my energy. I had reached that point of, oh, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> like, you know, how am I? And John Karandi talks about like when you're right at a manifestation, you're yeah. at, sometimes it goes down so it can make room for the. <clears throat> but anyway, I had reached that point of like, and I'd also had started listening to you and Dan Radio Style. I love Dan Radio yeah. Style. Oh my God, he is the sweetest <laughs> guy. I know. I started listening to your interviews, and but I had just reached this point of oh, I can't. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I uh, had done a lot of work and I knew I was getting better. But, uh, and also, Michael is not a social media person because that's another huge issue, okay? Because yeah. I have a lot to say about social media, but I, he is not a social media person yeah. at all. So yeah. thank God, right? Yeah. But I never got his new number. Because remember, um, he lost his phone. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have his number. So that was kind of his way of blocking me in a way. That was his way. I knew it was, a, you know, it was kind of similar. Yeah. So <clears throat> the night I got the call from him, the call, I was out working. And I do another, uh, I do, uh, I drive for Lyft, which is um, another version of Uber yeah. in America. Now it's in the States. Yeah. I also do another delivery platform where I pick up food from restaurants and I deliver it to people's yeah. homes. Yeah. Pretty easy. But it's all, you know, on my, it's all on my apps on my phone type yeah. work. And um, I remember I was thinking about it like really hard, like oh, this is never going to happen. I'm sick of this. Yeah. And I, I got out of my car to drop off some food. And as I was walking back to the car, the phone was ringing and it was the number of his friend. Okay. So a I'm like, met in the supermarket. And it was like a Tuesday night at eight 30. Okay. So I'm like, hello. And I heard his voice. And I tell you what, Agnes, I thought I was like, <laughs> He had, to say it. he had to say it twice. I'm like, huh? It was, it was surreal. Like when you're, and you know, we, you know, you guys have, you've talked about your first ma conscious manifestations and they feel surreal. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause it came at, cause the universe knows just when to get in there. And as the second that you least expect it. And when you're busy, distracted, all that stuff. Yeah. Right in the exactly. middle of that. Yep. Well, no, it's kind of like, okay, right now. Like, the universe knows how to do that. And even though I was thinking about him, and I was like, uh, 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 I, I, did not think he, I, I did not think he was going to call at that moment. And so he wasn't ready to call me from his phone yet. Yep. 
But when I heard his voice, it was like music to my ears mm. and I was in complete shock and he, he asked me how I was doing and it was about a maybe three, four minute conversation. And I knew in that moment that I had done it. Yeah. Um, that he would call me soon. And he said a number of things that I had done in my visualizations that when I first started doing Veronica's stuff, when I was doing my own visual, visualizing, yeah. he said a number, this is key people, this is key, this is your, where you can prove to yourself. Yeah. He said a lot of the things that I had imagined him saying. Yeah. And another thing that Abraham Hicks talks about is that the universe will deliver to you the essence of it, the yeah. essence. It may not be exactly, but it'll be the essence of what you are trying to create, right? The essence of it. So he said a number of, of things I had imagined. And when we hung up, I cried. Yeah. I literally, I just cried and, and drove and cried because I was very overjoyed to talk to him. But I felt like that's where the self-love comes in. Yeah. The other reason that people... I think that you interfere in the process is because you don't realize how you're loved. We are loved by the universe that we deserve to have the universe do things for us and our dreams come true. Yeah. And that, so I realized that the reason I had interfered so much before was because I didn't love myself enough yeah. to believe that the universe would do this for me, that yeah. the universe would, could do it. Yeah. Okay, and Juana, I didn't love myself a lot. And Juana, I think too, what's really important about this part of your story is you didn't contact him first. You couldn't, but you also, you allowed. And I think that's something else. When you interfere, there is no allowing when you interfere. And so, and I'll tell you, at 50 years old, that took me 40 years to learn how to allow. So I get what you're saying because it is such a big thing to not try and, like you say, just coax it along. Just, just let's, let's get the number from his friend or, you know, all those things that we do to stick our fingers in the pie to see if the cake's ready yet. You didn't do that. And then you got your full manifestation of it happening totally, like you said, he said the things that you'd visualise. And I think that's that thing about you've, you allowed the fruit to ripen. Fully. Exactly. And yes. And it was so hard. I'm not going to lie. And I understand yeah. Yeah. how incredibly hard it is to do that. Yeah. But I, and, and you're right. I could have tried to get his number. I could have stopped into his work. Yeah. And I did not do that. And it was torture. Yeah. But I knew, yeah. I knew that this, that I knew that this was it, that if I didn't figure this out now, that I never would. Yeah. And so <clears throat> you're right. The, 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 uh, the allowing part is such a struggle for yeah. all of us. Yeah. But when that, when, when that happened and I, I you also have to, um, so I want to get to that in a moment in terms of, the issue of this whole controversy in this community about specific person and whether, you know, it's right or if, if you're getting into their free will and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But after that point, I um, went full on. I, I said to myself, to the unit, well, I said to the universe, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust yeah. you. And I went full on in the self love. I didn't know when I was going to hear from them again. Yeah. And I still had to deal with the doubts coming up and, and when is he going to call and that kind of thing. But it is mental discipline, mental and emotional discipline. Yeah. And it, it's going to be for the rest of your life. Yeah. But that, that was proof to me that I knew now that I could do anything. This may seem like a small thing. Yeah. But I knew that as long as I, with my doing my work, I now knew that I could do anything. Yeah. Didn't matter what it was. So, so when did, okay, just from a timeline point of view, when, um, when was the phone call from him that night? What was this still April? This was, yeah, this was like the second week of April. So the timeline from, from, let's say the timeline from starting the work, 
because that's what people are going through more. It's the time, well, I'm doing these visualizations, but nothing's working. Yeah. The timeline was about five weeks. So for with Veronica, uh, she says 25 days, but you know, you got to, yeah. so it was about, it was a little bit more than a month yeah. from doing the work. But what people have to understand is that's just the beginning. And also, I've had a four-year, like you went three years, four years with your person. This is a four-year thing I've been going through with this man. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's not just because of this one thing. Doesn't mean there's been four years I've been going through this. All right. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's not like uh, you know you're just skimming down the lane all of a sudden with no. it. But yeah. So but 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 the focus work. If you stay focused. It doesn't take that long. It seems yeah. like an eternity when you're going through it, right? Yeah. It just seems like hell, like, oh my God, like, is this day going to be over? <laughs> but when I look back, <laughs> true, right? Yeah. But when I look back on it, when I look back on it, it really wasn't that long a period yeah. of time. It just seemed like it. It does. It does. Wow. So, yeah. Yes. Continue, continue. Okay, so uh, after the the uh, um, the phone call, I went into more of Agnes's work. I started really delving into more of the material. I started listening to more to Neville Goddard. I love the way you say his name with your accent. It's so <laughs> not, it's so boring the way we, especially in Colorado, because we have no accent here. But I love the way because I love accents and I love the way you yeah. say it. And that he's such a cool name, Neville Goddard. What a I cool know. name, huh? And, and you, know what, you know what, Quano, I'm staying at an Airbnb. Um, I've stayed there for three weeks. I literally just got to this Airbnb yesterday or the day before. But I got there and the lady gave me the street name and it was Addison Road. So I got there late at night, didn't see, and it was on a corner. And I came out that morning and it was the corner of Addison Road and Neville Street. And I just went, oh, oh God. <laughs> Imagine that somewhere Neville Goddard's soul is ting tingling, I think, uh, with all of this. It's got to yeah. be tingling, you know what I mean? But that's great that you uh, yeah. were drawn to his name. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Because it's not a common um, name. It's not a common it's name anymore. Not. So, yeah, when he pops up, you go, oh. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, of course. Of course yeah. that was a, a yeah. natural attraction to that. You were magnetized. Um, yeah. Must have been. But yeah, I started, yeah. So I started to delve into more of the material and more of, of and I, uh, more of the, what you're talking about, because you explain it so well. And you, you were able to get me to a point where I could listen to more of his lectures. There's a number of really good lectures he has on YouTube that are very clear. Yeah. There's one in particular that I've, I've been listening to he is so passionate and he talks about uh, where his brother started creating the house that yeah. they wanted. Have you you've heard that lecture? I it takes him a minute. If you would send it, then I can put it down in the description for the others. That would be great. Yeah, he taught, he's really, um, he's so passionate when he talking about it and now that i'm a little more used to how he's talking yeah. and a lot of my resistance has come down yeah. because of this process i've been to i i can hear him more yeah and uh also i've listened to uh, john karande yeah. uh some of he doesn't have a lot of videos but some his the two that he two q a videos he has are just amazing like yeah he's very advanced but also very helpful unfortunately he's had his youtube channel down in the last week so i'm not sure where he's gone but he's a lot of people have emailed me saying where is he where is he john does tend to disappear you those of you that know him he is very advanced he lives on his own planet a lot of the time he's got incredible knowledge and he pulls the plug and sometimes you don't see him for four months and then he comes back. So yeah, I just thought I'd say that on here so people don't email me because he does do this. It's part of how he operates. There's no need to worry. Oh, okay. It's how he recharges. So 
That, that's okay. And yeah. I understand that because he even said that his work he does with people, he does a lot of impressing. It's very draining. It is draining. Yeah, and you're working. yeah, it is. When you work with people at this emotional level all the time, it does take bits out of you. So, yeah, you do need to recharge for sure. Yeah, because people are really needy in that place. So uh, I understand. And he even explained that, explains that in one of the Q&As. Because I have noticed he hasn't been online, but that that's fine. I mean, he, yeah. he offers a plenty of information in the material that's there. Yeah. And um, that's fine. I, I, he yeah. doesn't, he can, that's fine. I do understand, though. Yeah. But his, his knowledge is also key. But, um, again, I threw myself into to really and getting to the place of really enjoying the self-love and then incorporating the affirmations. Yeah. And, and. Trying to understand living from the end. That's a huge thing, people, living from the end. It's not as hard as, I mean, it's hard to make the transition. And what, what is hard about it, and I was talking about this with Agnes before we came online, went live, is dealing with the what is. And how does Neville say it? Oh, the old man, the, yes, the, um, old man. Yeah. the your current situation when you're trying to transition from one real one reality to another one. Yeah, you that's that's state. what's bo- current state. Uh-huh. It uses the word state. Yeah. Your current state. Yeah. And so that that's what the struggle is. And and well that that is what the challenge is. Yep. Uh but you have to realize that you've already been doing this we've been doing this all along yep. if you, if you just weren't aware of it. The only reason why you become so now that you're aware, that's why you're all upset about the what is, but before when you weren't aware of what you were doing, you really weren't thinking about it that much. You were just living life, right? Exactly. And you're just living life doing things to you. And life is bringing things to you. Some of which you did like some of which you didn't. Yeah. And you thought it was just but you, to you randomly. You didn't think it was a, exactly. Like, yeah, directly related to what you project out. So, you know, it's, it, it's <laughs> that, and you, when, once you can realize yourself and talk yourself out of that yeah. is, is, uh, and it's staying in touch with your emotions. And I wanted to say something about you, you got it when it comes to this whole issue of a specific person, I feel you need to know, sorry, there's a big truck moving next to me here. I can you, see you that. have to, I can see it out. You have huge tires. <laughs> I'm, parked in a, I'm parked in a Walmart parking lot, okay? Yeah, as, uh, you, as you do. <laughs> um, you have to know your situation and your person, and the, you have to start to tune in. I think when you're talking about a specific person, I think the appropriateness of you wanting to be them, with them. I think there needs to be a certain level of appropriateness yeah. um, in in wanting to be with this person. I hear some of these these stories of people wanting to, not stories, but I hear these things on your feed and what you talk about, I mean, in your, um, and so forth, what you talk about, some of the people are writing about. And I think that is a step to take is to tune in and ask if this is an appropriate situation and is it for you? And is it, um, you got to know your heart and, you, and you maybe know that person to some extent, the heart of the situation, tune into that. And, and instead of, uh, I, I think I'm hearing a lot of things that may not be necessarily appropriate just because you hear, I can have anybody I want that. Okay. But the first thing you have to do is work on your self love and then, yeah you can be aligned with it, aligned with it more. But I, I think, I don't know if enough people are asking that question of themselves or the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, at anyway, so I started doing the work and, um, that's when, uh, let's see, May 18th, he called me and, um, he called me from his phone. Yeah. Now, a little caveat to this is that there are nuances to your situation that are going to be there. Every situation has its own nuances. And that's when you have to get to that knowing that I was just talking about. 
and you can it you can help that along by doing the, the work and and I had spent enough time away from him I had spent a lot of time on my self-love and more time on my self-love so I decided to reach out to his friend because uh, I actually had ran into Michael <laughs> I forgot to say this I ran into him uh, on a uh, where he was working in downtown Denver and I happened to drive by and he was working outside of his job yeah. so I decided to be a normal person and I waved at him so we spoke and he said he would call me but then I didn't hear anything so I decided to reach out to his friend because I felt like I knew I was coming from a, a really good peaceful self-loving place yeah and that's again a nuance but I hadn't over contacted before that I had done a lot of allowing not just of the contact thing but just the whole situation in general I knew I had allowed it space. Yeah. I had allowed room. So I knew that was going to be okay. So his friend responded and said, I'll have him get in touch with you. And sure enough, like an hour and a half later, he called. Wow. And I was busy working. I was busy working and he left me a message. And, and that's when, uh, you know, please call me. And then we spoke and then he invited me. Yeah. So, so again, you have, this brings me to another point, which is so important and it's made very clear in asking and is given no one can tell you what's best for you except for you yeah and this is something you talk about a lot you and Dan radio style talk about a lot stop looking for other people to answer things for you the whole yep. stop talking to other people I learned that a, a while ago with this but stop talking to other people stop trying to get your your yep. reassurance from even at Mace, I mean, I know I want you to exactly. you talk to her, but you know, stop trying to get all these answers from, you have the answers within you. Yeah. That's why I knew it was okay to reach out to his friend. I knew it was going to be okay because yeah. I could feel that it was okay. Plus the work I'd put into it. Yes. A lot of people just don't trust yeah. their inner guidance at all. There's so, a lot of us are so disconnected. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. And that's the thing that you're developing that you're trying to get from your specific person instead of putting the time in to connect with yourself through self-love, through reflection, through meditation, through once you do all that, you've got, you don't put all that pressure on to that relationship and the person's free mm -hmm. to love you instead of forced and pressured to love you. So much better for them as well. And if you really love them, like you say you do, you wouldn't want to pressure them anyway. No, and you're healing yourself when you start doing the self-love work, the meditations, and then you go into your day backing it up with the affirmations, you yeah. know, uh, wouldn't it be nice? And then is it wonderful? I love when you start doing that, you can feel your whole sense of self yeah. just completely changes. Your real power comes back. And that's, that's where it is. When you feel that power of, of I am love, I love myself I'm I am first best I am important I matter yeah. I I am uh, uh, I I'm deserving I'm worthy when you keep yeah. doing you feel like this surge of power coming from within yeah. you so yeah. you have to a lot of people I in in videos where you're talking about this specifically get off the other person there's people in your thread going Oh, this person, blah, blah, blah. And they're making it still all about that person. I know that you pushed out because that was the other thing. When you started talking about you pushed it out, yeah. it immediately clicked. Yeah. It's, re it's hard to accept. It is. I'm but good. once you can accept that, yeah. once you can accept it, you're on your way. Mm. Yeah. Once you can accept that it's you pushed out and then you don't, you don't have to spend a lot of time over analyzing what it is. Just go right back into... Yeah. a corresponding affirmation exactly. to, to, and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Yeah. So Kwana, tell me, tell me, cause I've actually got another interview in about 15 minutes. Okay. Once you met Michael on the street, cause people are not going to not want to hear the end of this. What happened after you met him on the street and then you, you, you met the, the, you talked to the friend and got Michael to ring you, he rang you an hour and a half later. Then what happened? <laughs> he asked me to if what I was doing after work and he invited me to to get together and go out for a bite to eat yeah. 
Yeah. And that's when it just all rolled from there. It was amazing. We, we did not shut up and didn't sleep. I sped the night with him, but like I told you, there was no hanky panky. Yeah. And he just watched, he opened his heart to me. He said uh, again, more things that I had imagined or hoped he would say. Um, he shared with me, uh, about his, his his son and that situation that I didn't know that he hadn't he shared with me what he was going through these last few months yeah and that how much he missed me and it was really hard for him and that he wanted to call me but he felt drained by our relationship yeah and um, it was remarkable it was remarkable so then I shared with him you know I didn't go into detail but yeah. at that time I didn't say well I was imagining I just said that I was, I've been doing a lot of work on myself and I realized that self-love yeah. was what I needed to do and that's what I've been working on. Wow. So it was just amazing. We had an amazing time. Uh, it was almost overwhelming. Yeah. But it, was, it was so incredible. It was, it was it's it, ugh, just after you go through something like that and then you do all this work and then, especially when it's someone you love, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's really incredible. So that's what happened after that. Wow. And how has it changed your dynamic? Because, okay, how long have you been back together since that dinner? Has it been a month? Uh, well, let's see. That that was two weeks ago. So okay. so it's been we, um, two weeks. Went through about a week. Yeah, we, after that, I he didn't communicate for about a week. Yep. But then I went more into, I am loved, I'm important, I'm priority, I'm priority. And now this, as it stands right now, this man cannot stop calling me. Love he is calling me all the time, texting, calling. We've gotten together the last few uh, nights, days. We went to perform last night at this open mic together. It was really nice. Beautiful. Um, he's opened his heart more. Yeah. And uh, just saying a lot of I love you, I love you to me. And so that that's that's and, and also we've talked we've had the talk. Yeah. We've talked about some issues. We've talked about some issues, but um I can tell that there is a, a definitely a shift. And the point I want to make too about imagining someone being in their best self, keep doing that, but I also the key is to when you get to a point, no matter what they do, it doesn't bother you. Yeah. That you can accept and be in your security and your self-love yeah. and bring yourself back to emotional stability no matter what they say or do. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. And it Does avoids so sense? many arguments and anger and stuff when you can breathe and surrender and let it go rather than whoosh with the anger. You know, I think so many of us do that. You just react, react, react. So, Kwana. Exactly. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, this has been such a great interview. Do you want to come back and say a month's time and we'll do a part two? I'd love to because then the other thing I'm working on now that, now that I got the boyfriend back, um, check. <laughs> oh, yeah. you guys could keep doing the work, obviously. But yeah. now I'm on to money. Yeah. And 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 creating my dream life because uh, I am an artist, yeah. writing and and the music. Yeah. And and I definitely um the the because a big issue for artists, us artist types, is that we can't make money doing what we love. That's a huge issue for us. Yeah, it so, is. And you know what? I had to let go of two beliefs: creative people don't make money. And you have to work hard for money. They were the two, oh. of being a creative person, those were the two that were kicking my backside. Oh, me too. Oh. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, it's not it's uncommon. Terrible. It's not uncommon amongst creative people. But you can, look, you've already had a great example of focusing your way into something you didn't want, focusing your way out of something and into what you want. You can do it here, you can do it there. It's, it's no different. But yeah. So this will be to be continued for the next one. It'll be this time I'll message you <laughs> from London. And um, Oh, great. Yeah, just shoot me through some dates via email that work for you and then I can lock it Absolutely. In. Yeah, anytime from like we're the beginning of June, say the beginning of July. 
Okay. And we'll do a part two, you. which will be great. <laughs> and we can even talk about the money stuff, you know, in more depth. It doesn't have to be a full success story. It can be a, a, a nutting something out, you know? Well, that that's what I'm, I'm actually right in the middle of nodding something out. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it I, I can tell there's a shift happening where the universe is kind of magically handling things for me. So yeah. kind of hard to believe, but yeah, yeah I'm, tr I'm trying to knock myself out of a jam. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, I'm definitely uh, uh, looking, looking at those two other issues now. So yeah. Okay. Kwana, I'm going to leave you with one good money affirmation. This works for me all the time. Money comes in faster than I can spend it because that's the opposite to what creative people think. So say that yeah. hundreds of times a day. Honestly, it has changed my entire business. Getting rid of those okay, I, I, beliefs, creative people don't make money and you have to work hard for money. Getting rid of those and then putting in this affirmation, my business has exploded and I'm struggling to keep up now. So it does work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I trust you. I trust you because I've, I've heard that in some of the meditations and uh, I heard you, I've heard you say that that was a big one for you. So I, yeah. I have started using it and I'm going to yeah. continue. Yay. Thank you for coming Yay. on. Oh my God. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Agnes. Your work no is so important. It was a pleasure to meet uh, you face. Um, send me the links of anything we've talked about. If you remember, okay. if you don't, what I'll do okay. is I'll, up, I'll upload the YouTube and then, you know, you can listen to it and then you can remember what we talked about and I can add them in later, but yeah. So thank I, you. I'm going to sign off here and I'll say bye to you in private. Bye everyone. I hope you enjoyed Kwana's bye. story. Bye. Keep doing your work people. Yeah. <laughs>